Question number one. Do you know what your smartphone is doing while you are asleep? Jeffrey Fowler, a British journalist, wanted to find out. So in the morning, he checked the reports for his own smartphone. And it brought very surprising results. 11.43 PM, a company called Amplitude got Jeffrey's phone number, email, and exact location. 3.58 AM, another company called Appboy received a digital fingerprint of his phone. 6.25 AM, a tracker called Demdex find a way to identify Jeffrey's phone. And an application called Yelp was checking Jeffrey's IP address every five minutes. In a single week, Jeffrey found 5,400 trackers in his own smartphone, and mostly from application. Trackers are everywhere. Every time you go on a website, they are web trackers. They are present 100% of your time of navigation. They will analyze your behavior online and your Google searches. So your searches not only tell Google, but also third parties that you never heard about. So why is your smartphone sending data to companies that you never heard about? Why is your data leaving your phone? What is your data used for? And why don't we know about it? And why don't we care? And I hope you like my question number one, because I have four more questions for you that might change the behavior towards data. Question number two. Who do you think knows you best? Your parents, the governments, or Google? I'm going to give you a clue. It's not your parents. We all know the answer. Largest internet company or the biggest data collector in the world history. But let me first speak about the governments so I can illustrate to you the value of data. Wikileaks, Snowden, we all heard scandals about communication being monitored by government using surveillance software which collect data about individuals. Here is a scoop for you. I was managing one of the companies pointed out by Wikileaks and Snowden. My job is to sell software to government and secret services. Same data which are collected by big internet companies. Same software which collect data about you. So do I know the value of data? Yes. Do I know a lot about surveillance and profiling? Yes. Am I scared of being monitored by government? Mainly not, but let's be honest, it depends on the government. Am I scared of being monitored by big companies? Big, yes. Surveillance software assist the government in the arrest of the criminals from pedophile to terrorist, from drug dealers to murderer. And nobody is complaining about the crimes that have been prevented or the criminals that have been arrested thanks to those soft software. The criminals have been arrested thanks to their data trail. Data is gold for the police all around the world. But if in the wrong hand, the software which collect data about individuals can become a weapon, a dangerous weapon, a lack of ethics and regulation can lead to catastrophic scenarios. Few years ago, a surveillance software was sold to a country and the government used it to identify dissidents, arrest them and torture them. As a software dealer, what stopped me from selling to dictators or mafia? How do I know that the government will use my software fairly? It's the same for internet companies. How do I know that they will use your data fairly? We need ethics and regulation with our data from our international institution for both government 
and internet companies. When I speak about my job, here are the comments I get the most. Have you ever spied on your boyfriend? Is WhatsApp safe? Is it OK if I use a VPN? Anyway, I don't care. I have nothing to hide. So this leads to my question number three. Why are you a paradox? Why would you use a VPN if you have nothing to hide? Why do you think you have nothing to hide? You will lock your door to protect yourself physically, but you will not do anything about your virtual security, even if cyber criminality is the fastest growing crime in the world. You are willing to give your DNA what your voice sounds like, your fingerprint, in exchange of free, easy, and enjoyable services. 80% of you are concerned about personal information being viewed, but only 10% of you will read the privacy agreement online. The security expert, Miko Eponent, set out a free Wi-Fi hotspot in the middle of London to prove this point, and he buried in the terms and conditions. In exchange of Wi-Fi, the recipient agrees that they will assign to us their firstborn child for a duration of eternity. <laughs> the first hour, six people signed up. But let's be honest. We all know the value of data. We all know the danger of internet. But we need internet. We are dependent on internet. Switching off our phone, even for a few hours, could give us anxiety. Internet companies had created a society which demands us to participate in the system. It has become a reflex for us to go on Google every time a question pops into your head. So not only Google knows your name, where you live, who your friends are, they also know your plans, what you're thinking, and your deepest and darkest secrets. If you Googled Alcoholic Anonymous, drug, tax fraud, online dating, it's known and recorded. Some of you will tell me, I have nothing to hide. I have nothing to hide could not only affect your identity and your freedom, but it can also take you to the other side of the law. 66% of this room has already committed a crime. You probably already illegally downloaded movies, books, music. And even if you don't anymore, it's recorded. Internet remembers. And yes, downloading movies is a crime. Last year, uh, a woman in Minnesota was fined $2 million for illegal download. Before the Second World War, the city of Amsterdam was collecting records about their citizens thinking that knowing them better, they will help them better. But when the Nazi came, those records were more than useful to identify the Jewish citizen. Records. Internet company records everything. You can't make mistakes online. And this happened even to celebrities. Kevin Hart, the highest paid comedian in the US, was pulled out of the Oscar ceremony because three years prior, he posted an insensitive comment about the LGBT community. Nobody is off limit. Another example, Facebook knows how satisfied with your life you are, whether you are emotionally stable or not. It even knows when your relationship is going south. And this is only based on the data analytics of the likes that you have clicked. Cambridge Analytica influence elections because of the Facebook likes. On the other hand, don't think that data will understand you. They know you, but they don't understand you. And this is how it works. You will go on a website, a real estate website, to buy a property in Dubai. Then you will visit uh, online Indian, Indian online dating website. And then you will go and play video games. The data will deduct that you have a decent salary, that you can afford a house, that you are Indian, that you are single, and that you are a geek. 
That might be you. But there is a change that is not you. Maybe you don't plan to buy a house. Maybe you're just helping a friend. Maybe you're not Indian. Maybe you're not even single. Your profile is based on assumption and the collection of random facts about you does not collect to a firm understanding of who you are. So this leads to my question number four. Why big internet companies shouldn't collect data about me? I'm going to give you a number. 4.1 billion. 4.1 billion is the number of records compromised only for the first six months of 2019. Few months ago, the DNA services testing my heritage announced that hackers had breached more than 92 million of its accounts. So if your potential disease becomes public, do you think you will get in health insurance? One day you might apply for a loan and get rejected because deep in the corporate system, there is a data about you that you might be likely to have Alzheimer and maybe die before you will repair the loan. So before you argue that you have nothing to hide, without privacy, there is no freedom. Privacy is your intimacy, is when you can be yourself, when you can be alone, when you can be naked without being judged. We trust Facebook, Google, Instagram with our data and with our lives. And we don't have any second thought using them. We depend on those in their internet companies. And our choice ability is impacted. We have the choice to turn off our phone, but we would really make that choice. We need internet and phones to interact with others, to work with others. We don't have time to read the privacy agreements. So this leads to my final question, question number five. What should you do then? You can stop and limit your social sharing. Stop posting on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram until our privacy rights are fully protected and regulated. Stop putting pictures of your holidays that can tell so much about your agenda and can become dangerous for your physical security. Don't forget that everything you do online is recorded. Your tweets are public property. If you were racist and you change your political view, it's recorded. Stop putting your real name online everywhere. Last time I was on a train to Normandy and I was looking for Wi-Fi. And I realized that the passenger next to me put her real name on the hotspot. It took me three seconds to Google her name and find her LinkedIn, her Instagram, her job, her name, her friends, her city. Three seconds. That's the perfect way to initiate the curiosity of a stalker, just because she put her real name on the hotspot. Stop using search engine which doesn't respect your privacy rights. Every time you go on a website, check if they are uh, web trackers. I would like Apple and Google to label when they are using third-party trackers. I know the value of data, and I don't want mine in any end where it doesn't need to be. I think it's good that people are critical towards government but it should be the same towards big internet companies. Edward Snowden said, arguing that you don't care to the right to privacy because you have nothing to hide, is no difference than saying you don't care about free speech because you have nothing to say. And I agree, even he probably, if he probably dislikes me. Um, without privacy, you can't behave as you want to behave and be yourself. So let's fight for our privacy rights. Let's make internet safer. Let's ask for more transparency. I want to know which data is collected about me and what they are used for. Let's find the right balance between privacy and safety and keep using those internet services. 
After I read this talk to my friend, he told me that he understands fully the importance of data and privacy, but he will not change his behavior online. I told him that this talk is for people like him, who paradoxically understand the importance of privacy, but will not change this, their behavior, and we stay blind about the situation. So if you feel that you're like him, please at least change your password every three months. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.